Running year-end is easy with Sage Payroll. In this video, we will cover all important dates and deadlines. We'll explain how to complete your current tax year processing and prepare for payroll year-end, including an explanation of week 53. We'll show you how to complete each step of the payroll year-end process to make sure you can complete this confidently and on time. We'll help you get ready to process your first pay run of the new tax year. Let's look at some important dates of a payroll year end. The 6th of April. This is the start of the new tax year. You can process pay runs in the new tax year, even if you've not yet completed your year end steps. The 19th of April. This is your deadline for the final submission of the tax year. This is the employer payment summary within the year end tab. The 31st of May. By this date, your employees should have received their P60s. We'll now look at preparing for year-end and finalizing your current tax year processing. Before completing your final pay period of the tax year, you should process any outstanding current year levers. This means any levers with a leave date on or before the 5th of April should be processed as a lever in time for the final pay run of the tax year. You can mark an employee as a lever in the Employee tab. You can do this using bulk actions or in the individual employee record. Let's move on to the next item on the list. This is extra pay periods. If you run a weekly, fortnightly, or four weekly payroll, you may have an extra pay period, also known as week 53. Extra pay periods will apply to you if your regular pay date falls on the 5th of April or in a leap year, the 4th or the 5th of April. If you do have an extra pay period, don't worry. Simply process your payroll as usual. PAYE will be automatically calculated on a non-cumulative week one basis in accordance with legislation. Let's move on to the next item on the preparation checklist, advancing pay over the payroll year end period. You can't advance holiday pay over two tax years. For example, you can't process week 52, and advance holiday pay for week one. If the employee is on holiday over the payroll year-end period, you should pay each holiday week separately without using the advance pay feature. Use the advance pay option if the advance pay period covers any weeks up to and including week 52. For example, you are processing week 51 and advancing to week 52. If you have a week 53, this should be processed separately and should not be included in an advanced holiday payment. Let's move on to the next item on the checklist, processing your final pay run of the tax year. Before running your year end, you must process your final pay. Do this as usual, making sure your full payment submission is successfully sent to HMRC. Pay dates are confirmed in the summary tab. Your next pay run should be on or after the 6th of April. Complete your employer payment summary for the last P32 reporting period of this year. When sending your final EPS, check that your CIS and statutory reclaim values are correct. If required, make any corrections or adjustments before sending the final EPS. And make sure you send the pension information for your payroll to your provider, as usual. The payroll year-end preparation checklist is now complete. Let's move on to the year-end process. From the menu, click year-end. First, check the tax year to report on is showing the correct tax year. This should be the tax year you are completing. Step one is to review your employee's pay values. The purpose of this step is to check values and make any necessary corrections before the payroll year-end is completed. Choose review employee pay P11. A list of all employees paid in this tax year appears, including their total pay to date. To view more detailed information for individual employees, click View P11 next to their name. To view the P11 for all employees at once, click View P11 for all employees. Two P11 reports will be produced for each employee. One containing pay and PAYE information, the other national insurance and statutory deduction values. To help you check your employee pay, you can run and export additional reports within the reporting menu. You can return to these reports at any time during or after payroll year end. However, if you'd like to save or print the reports, you can do so here. 
Once you're happy your employees have been paid correctly this tax year, you can close the P11 report and then click Return to Year End. To confirm step 1 is complete, select the checkbox. Step 2 of the payroll year end is to submit your employer payment summary, also known as an EPS. This is your final EPS submission of the tax year. This should be sent by the 19th of April. You can see a countdown here. To continue, click Submit EPS. If you're closing your PAYE scheme, select this checkbox and enter the company cessation date. If you're not closing your scheme, don't select the checkbox. To continue, click Next. Check your CIS deduction suffered and recovery and compensation values. These are year-to-date values and are automatically calculated based on what you have entered on your EPS submissions throughout the tax year. To continue and submit the final EPS, click Next. To submit using your saved credentials, click Submit. Once the submission is successful, you will be notified here. Step 3 is to distribute your P60 certificates. This should be completed by the 31st of May, and you can see the countdown here. You can print your P60s onto plain paper. No stationery is needed. Alternatively, go paperless with online P60s. Sage HR Essentials is included in your Sage payroll subscription and available to you at no extra cost. Activate Sage HR Essentials so employees can securely view and download their P60s at any time on any device. To set up online P60s, go to Settings and Sage HR. Click here and follow the steps. To learn more about Sage HR integration and online documents, click Find Out More. Once you have activated Sage HR, publish P60s online by clicking here and entering the date you'd like to make these available to your employees. Access Sage HR using this menu. In the Payslip section, there's a P60 tab where you can view and print all P60s if required. You can automate your processes further and publish pay slips online each time you pay your employees. Back in Sage Payroll, in the Year End tab, you can print your P60s onto plain paper. A P60 will be produced for all employees who are still employed by you on the 5th of April. You can view the P60 for each employee individually by clicking the link next to their name. Alternatively, view them all at once by clicking the View All link. You can print them onto plain paper or save them to your computer. Once you have printed or saved the P60s, close the report. Then click Return to Year End. To mark this step as complete, select the checkbox. Step 4 of the payroll year end is not a mandatory step. This step is only applicable to you if you have made any corrections to the tax year processing after completing your final pay run of the year. To do this, click Submit Supplementary FPS and follow the on-screen instructions. The Supplementary FPS will automatically include any corrections you have made since your last pay run and full payment submission. This includes any leave dates you have entered after completing your final pay run of the tax year. Start processing in the new tax year with confidence as Sage Payroll updates automatically. The employment allowance has increased this tax year and you can now claim up to £10,500 in the 2025-2026 tax year. To submit your employment allowance claim for the new tax year, click here and follow the on-screen instructions. Any tax code changes you receive should be updated in Sage Payroll. Please check your PAYE online services for any tax code notices before running your first pay run of the tax year. When you run your first pay of the new tax year, this message will appear. You can amend tax codes here if required. Alternatively, you can amend the tax code in the employee record. The emergency tax codes remain at 1257L. You'll also be asked to confirm your reporting frequency for the new tax year. This is how often you produce your P32 report, submit your EPS and pay HMRC. 
It is important that you stay up to date with current tax year legislation. The small employer's relief for statutory payment reclaim is increasing from the 6th of April 2025. This is increasing from 3% to 8.5%. From the 6th of April 2025, parents could be entitled to neonatal care leave. This will apply to parents of babies who are admitted into neonatal care up to 28 days old and who have a continuous stay in hospital of seven full days or longer. To find out more about the qualifying conditions of neonatal care leave, please visit gov.uk. Alternatively, to learn more about all the legislation changes, please visit our Help Centre or Payroll Year End Hub. You have now learned how to prepare for and process your Payroll Year End in Sage Payroll.